Next up, let's talk about a disheartening game for all fans of football. The Broncos against the Steelers. Big Ben looked like Big Ben, as per the usual this season, but the Broncos underwent some huge changes early. For one, Drew Locke got knocked out of the matchup with an injury after throwing just five times for 20 yards, four of them being incompletions. Drew Locke is looking to be out for around four to five weeks, according to reports, but according to those same reports, Drew Locke is making a push to get back as soon as he can, possibly even sooner than that. So, let's talk about a Drew Locke-less, Cortland Sutton-less Broncos team after seeing them lose by five to the Steelers. I mean, the backup for the Broncos and now seemingly the starter for the foreseeable future, Jeff Driscoll, played relatively well for the situation he was put into. He threw two touchdowns and a pick and over 200 yards total. It's not like he played terribly or just absolutely let up a shutout. The Broncos team stayed competitive, giving themselves a shot all the way up to the final minutes. With Cortland Sutton now out, though, I don't expect the Broncos to win too many games until Drew Locke returns. Before the season, I had the Broncos making the playoffs at 7-9, and with Drew Locke out for an extended period of time, that prediction is becoming less and less likely, and I'm getting close to taking it back. I'll give it another game, though, just to see if Jerry Judy can help elevate Driscoll to the challenge and if the Broncos can win just enough games without Locke to keep them in the running for the playoffs. As for the Steelers, things are looking good in terms of their ability to make it to the playoffs. Overall, they're 2-0, and their offense has been playing well. James Conner didn't show up in Game 1, but here in Week 2, he proved to us that he's still the number one man for the Steelers, rushing for over 100 yards and a touchdown in Week 2. Big Ben also threw for over 300 yards and two touchdowns and a pick. He played well, and I believe this combination was a big piece outside of the injuries sustained by the Broncos to the puzzle that was the Steelers' Week 2 victory. Now, I didn't have the Broncos winning this week against the Steelers, even with Locke, but considering how close Driscoll got them, I now wonder if Locke would have been able to overcome to overcome the odds and win that game had he not been injured. Defensively, the Steelers put on great pressure with seven total sacks, a brilliant day overall in the pass rush, and the lone interception gives the secondary a bit of a pass on a large amount of yards, along with the two touchdowns they led up to a banged-up Broncos squad. Overall, though, the Steelers are setting themselves up well to make the playoffs this season, while the Broncos are not.